Thanks very much, Marcia, and welcome to St. Augustine, everybody. I will go through. This is really about the Caribbean. It's, I prepared it in the first instance of Trinidad, but a lot of what I'm about to say is true of the Caribbean, and I'll extend it to there. So this is what the presentation is going to look like. Uh, we begin, I'm saying I borrow some words from one of my colleagues on campus, Delilah Worrell. We are sailing in uncharted waters. Uh, we have never seen a crisis like this one, and it's not good enough to talk about uh, a bad weather. It is, it is a, a veritable hurricane that we are facing. And no matter how good, how well we may have prepared, it's going to be very difficult to deal with what follows. You've already heard that we are facing probably the worst crisis since the war. In fact, it's probably since the late 20s, early 30s. The old remedies, remedies need not apply. Because we are sailing in uncharted waters, we may not understand what has happened. And if you remember, in the last time uh, the uh, canes uh, came to the rescue to, to some extent, many people are thinking that that might work. But my own view is that it, that may not necessarily be the case. And even the best are disagreeing. I don't know if you know those two names, Krugman. Krugman is the uh, Nobel laureate for this year. He has referred to Barrow, someone that the French would call Nobelisable, which is a, a Nobel Prize candidate. He has referred to his economics as bonehead economics and has classified Barrow as a bonehead economist. And of course, these are, these are two of the best economists that, that we have around. Incidentally, Barrow will be speaking at uh, the conference of the Salesis next year as the distinguished Sir Arthur Lewis lecturer. So we are going to have a bonehead economist speaking. And next year, it will, in fact, be the, the, the main event. The, the indices are dubious. There are low energy prices. Well, gas, the price has gone up in recent time to about, about 60, but that is low relative to what it has been and, and on the basis of which plans have been made for the country like Trinidad and Tobago. But what is, what is low uh, for us may be high for, for other people. Employment is relatively high in, the, in Trinidad and Tobago, but already there is a lot of downward pressure here and in the, in, the, in, the, in the rest of the Caribbean. In the case of Trinidad and Tobago, the foreign exchange reserves and in the countries like Barbados and so on, there's a relatively uh, healthy supply, but they are declining. And in the case of Trinidad and Tobago, which still has a, a, a relatively certain source, they're declining pretty fast. The rate of exchange against the US dollar is holding, but is under considerable pressure. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the Trinidad and Tobago market will know that there is a heavy demand of late, and many, many banks have resorted to rationing on the understanding that the central bank will do the necessary replenishing. Public sector indebtedness, the central bank governor referred to that. I'll show you a graph in a little while. I, I added it only yesterday, so you could have a look at it. There's, of course, the turbulence in the financial sector, which we did not anticipate in the first instance to be so rapid, but it has come through the, the events of Clico, and that has affected the entire Caribbean. The economic resilience is low in Trinidad and Tobago, largely because of the lack of diversification away from the traditional sectors, in the case of Trinidad and Tobago, the energy sector. And throughout the Caribbean, in particular, I would say in Trinidad and Tobago, there is questionable governance. And I will refer to some of that as, as we go through. Now, the loss of jobs in the U.S. and the general slowdown there will continue to affect us. We have not, uh, you heard the, the previous speaker speak about the BRIC countries holding up well against the U.S. because they have successfully, to some extent, decoupled. That's the fancy word the economists use these days. They have decoupled from the U.S. economy and from the European economy, and they are strengths and mights in their own right. But we have not done so in the Caribbean. So we continue to depend on the fortunes of the U.S. And to the extent that that is not likely to come right away. There is changing tone. There is a, you might, if you're following the, the way the IMF is, is uh, changing its forecast downwards, and in very, very, very recent times, you've been hearing about uh, we may have something starting towards the, the end of this year. I am not very uh, optimistic, I must say. But the fact is, once these economies continue to be in difficulty, we in the Caribbean will be in grave di difficulty. And as I indicated, the IMF and the World Bank are going downward all the time. This is a picture of the indebtedness here. And you'll see in leading the pack is what seems to be a relatively stable country, St. Kitts and Nevis, with uh, GDP to 
uh, debt to GDP ratio of 180. Economists normally use a figure of about 50%. And even in the case of Trinidad and Tobago, that, and this was in 2007, right? It has actually gone up in, in, in recent times. But this is the latest picture I had in my file, so I, I, I pulled it for you. Trinidad and Tobago was already uh, around 30%, and it's closer to 40 now. The bad figure is 50. And if you look at a country like Jamaica, who is second on the list, the, the, the figure is, is close to 140. And most of that, strangely enough, is domestic debt and not foreign debt. In the Trinidad and Tobago case, the Trinidad and Tobago foreign debt is relatively uh, good as well, and, but it, it is increasingly becoming indebted to, 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 to the local sector. So that is, a, that is not a good picture, and the central bank governor referred to it a, a, a few days ago that our indebtedness is likely to be a source of serious problems for us because what, what we earn, we are likely to have to repay in debt before we do anything else. So where do we go from here? Now, we cannot predict the current performance based on what has happened, and notwithstanding a lot of the serious packages that have been pumped, for instance, Barrow and Krugman I disagree on the Obama intervention. Barrow thinks it's not going to work, and is quite against it, whereas Krugman, in fact, that's why he called him a bonehead economist, Krugman, I think, who was actually in the formation of these, of these policies, is fairly convinced that it would go on. The diversified economy in the Trinidad and Tobago, in Trinidad and Tobago and elsewhere make, means that we will have very little to fall back on because the oil has gone through for us, or is going through, gas in particular. The oil has gone up, but the gas, if you look at it, is, and Trinidad and Tobago is more a gas economy these days. The gas prices are still relatively flat, and in the case of tourism, remittances for Barbados, Jamaica, and, and, and other countries, those receipts are falling away very, very rapidly, and there's very little to fall back on. And precisely at a time when we may need some sort of foreign assistance, you heard from the previous speaker that such foreign assistance may not be forthcoming to assist in the further diversification of the economy. At a time in the case of Trinidad and Tobago when diversification should have been the the, the word, the, 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 the foremost uh, word, that, that has not been happening. And it's, it's only this very, very late hour, and I think we could still go ahead and do it, that some diversification.